Hey everyone. Before, when we did Azure ML, we just trained the model, but we didn't do anything with the model. So in this video, we're going to continue to train the model, but we're going to register and actually deploy the model so we can use it as an endpoint and other applications can use that endpoint. So I'm in my Azure ML workspace here in my compute instance. I have one running, so I'll just open Jupyter Lab. All right, so I'll create another notebook here. And real quick, the data we're going to use, we already have that uploaded. It's going to be the Iris data set here, which if you've messed with machine learning before, it's kind of a standard data set for some machine learning classification tasks. And then we can actually look into that and explore the data a little bit. And we see we have some generic column headings. And if you haven't messed with this data set before, it's just some attributes on some on some irises and they categorize those into three different types of iris species. So in our notebook uh, we're going to do a few a few imports and uh, actually I'll just paste this in. So first we're going to get a workspace then data set experiment and auto ml config and then run details for that. Then we'll also get from scikit-learn the train test split method. And next I need my workspace and because we are in an Azure ML compute instance, I can just do workspace from config there. So it already has my subscription IDs and, and all that that it needs to build my workspace. And I can look at my data sets just to verify that we have the Irish data set in here. And there it is there. So we can get this Irish data set using dataset.get by name here. So pass in the workspace and then the name. Then we can get the name from our assets here. The name is Iris. Or we can look up here and use the name there. And we can convert this into a pandas data frame using the to pandas data frame method. And we can confirm the head method on here. And we'll get our data set. Now if you notice, our columns are just generic. Column 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We kind of want to make these a bit more detailed so we can rename our columns. So we can do iris data frame that rename and we're going to do our columns and this is going to be a dictionary. So we do column 1 is going to be sepal length, column 2, sepal width, column 3 is the pedal length, and column 4 is pedal width, and then column 5 is going to be our label, which I will rename to class. There we go. And we can call the head method on that again, just to verify that that worked and that looks good. Next we'll use the train test split method from scikit-learn and we'll just pass in our data frame. I like to get a test size of 20% of my data and I'll we'll set a random state state to 42 because that's the meaning of life. And I'll just return a train data frame and a test series here. And next we'll do some auto ML settings and we did a video on that before so I'll just paste these in here. The differences are mainly that our primary metric we updated the AUC weighted since this is a classification problem and not regression and then for our auto ML config we'll change our task to classification and then we give it our training data and then our label column name which is class and then next we get an experiment. We're using the experiment class pass in our workspace and then give it a name, so I'll call it Iris Experiment. And now we can get a run here by calling experiment.run, passing out auto ML fig, like this is submit.run. So auto ML config, then I'll say show output as true. And this is going to run for a few minutes here, so I'll let that run. All right, so this run finished. And we see we got some really good metrics from each of these runs here. 
we can get the best run from our experiment and then the model by getting by running the run that get output method and we can use that run details widget passing the run and then the show method on it unfortunately it doesn't look the best in the dark mode here but we can get this graph here and see most of them are in the, the high 90 percent and it looks like the top one is about 99.8 percent AUC here so that's pretty good now that we have our model we can register it and we can do that using the run that register model method this takes in a few things here first is the model name and we can get that using our best run here so best run dot properties and the properties is a dictionary so I can get the dictionary key which is model name I need a description so I do auto ml iris and we can pass in some tags in here if we want I'll just say none for no tags and if we run this oh, and I forgot to set the output into a variable here so I just say registered model and I'll run this again there we go so that registered and we can go back to our instance here into our models we have two because I ran that twice so we can get the latest one and it's version 2 we can look at some other stuff here some artifacts which is that model pickle file endpoints which we don't have any on here yet so now that we have the model registered we can deploy that register model into an endpoint and to do that we need a few more a few more imports here you know, run those so we get a few things uh, some web service classes inference config class a model and environment classes and we'll use those to deploy our model so the first is we're going to need an inference config and we use that inference config class that we imported and this is going to take a couple of things first it's going to take something called an entry script and we don't have that yet so what we can do and if we go and here we don't have any scripts that we can use but what we can do is we can use the best run that download file method and we can download a file from our run so if we go back to our workspace here and to experiments our iris experiments the run here we have outputs and logs here but there's nothing interesting that we can download so we go to child runs and go to the latest child run and then in here in the outputs we have this output folder and then we have a few files that we can use we have a condo environment yaml file and then we have the scoring file and this is actually what mature ml created for us so we can actually download this file and then we put it into an inference slash score dot pi file so now if we go here we have inference and there's our score.py file and then we replace this with inference slash score.py so we have our inference config now we need an ACI config use an ACI web service that deploy configuration and this tells what kind of configuration for our endpoint to be hosted on so we can say CPU cores is one memory and gigabytes let's say one and we put a description and say iris classification and with that we can do model dot deploy pass in our workspace a service name which will say auto ml iris and this is the, the register models here so we'll do register model then we pass in that inference config and then the ACI config and then with that we can call service dot wait for deployment as true if we run that so we run that and we get this error no usable environments found linked with your model so it doesn't know what environment that our model is using so we can get past this error by going back where we create our inference config we can download another file here so do run that download file and we're going to download that condo environment file 
we can use some constants with this. So let's import those constants. So from Azure ML, ML core that shared will import constants. We'll do constants dot conda environment file path, and then we'll save it to a file called myenv.yml. And we need to create an environment instance. So env equals environment that from conda specification, we give it a name. So my env and give it a file path of my env.yml, which is going to be with this same path that you download the file to. So we have that. And then in our inference config, we will just specify environment equals env. If we run this again, get another error. Uh, it says I can't find the file. So I did run instead of best run. So do that, run this again. And we get another error and see name already exists. So that's because we already have this endpoint here. So we can just delete this one from earlier. Good. Now we can rerun this and this should work. All right, so that ran and it says and succeeded. We go back to our workspace, to endpoints, go to the endpoint here. You can see our deployment state is healthy. And we can go up here to consume and get our rest endpoint. So I'll copy that and I'll open up Postman here. And I'll create another tab. It is going to be a post because we're going to send data to it. Put in our endpoint that we got. There we go. I'm going to set a header. Say content type to JSON because we're going to send some JSON to it. And the body, give it raw JSON. There we go. And when we send in our data, it has to be into a data array. And then inside that is the object of our column names. So we'll send that. We get a result of our class name. So iris Satosa. And let's do another one real quick just to double check. So we'll send that. And that one came back as Iris Virginica. So now that we have a deployed endpoint of our auto ML model, we can use this API call and any other application that we want to use and this for. So that's a pretty cool and easy way to, to get a model deployed and easily able to consume it with other applications. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.